Russia, the absolute largest country on earth, is a mixture of nearly 200 nationalities and cultures that live in a land that's larger than the surface of the moon. To manage such a large territory, the country is divided into dozens of federal subjects. Today we'll talk about a large territory on the eastern far side of the country, Kamchatka Krai. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Nearly as big as Spain, but home to only 300,000 people, Kamchatka Krai is at the eastern extreme of the Russian Federation. This is probably the easternmost outpost of a European culture and, although quite famous, surprisingly few people know anything about it. Forests as large as the eyes can see, a rich wildlife, geysers, volcanoes and a 2000 km long Pacific coastline, plus a rich and diverse culture. This is what Kamchatka is all about. So let's begin exploring the Kamchatka Krai. Since prehistoric times, the Kamchatka Peninsula has been populated, albeit sparsely, by various Asian tribes, including the Ainu, the oldest population inhabiting the Japanese islands. And this is the way it was for thousands of years, until 1697, when the first Russian explorers reached this faraway place. Starting from 1730, permanent Russian settlements began appearing. Commander Vitus Bering, after whom the Bering Strait was named, was one of the main explorers of the peninsula. While the region did not present any major economic attraction for the government, it did represent a vital strategic position for the Russian Empire. This importance is still evident to this day, as the Kamchatka Krai is home to Russia's Pacific fleet of mostly nuclear submarines. This military presence that's been around here almost since the peninsula was first explored was one of the main drives of the colonization of Kamchatka. The capital city of Kamchatka Krai is Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. And since it holds more than half of the Krai's entire population, you can imagine that it's also the largest city in the entire region. If you want to explore the Kamchatka Peninsula, this is where you have to come. That's because, due to its large size and isolation, the peninsula is actually not connected by road to the rest of the world. So you have to use this city's airport or port to begin exploring this stunning region. Because of this, although it's quite expensive, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky is actually a major tourist destination. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. And with that said, let's go to fact number 4. I don't know if you've noticed, but Kamchatka Krai is pretty damn close to the infamous Pacific Ring of Fire. In fact, it's an active part of it. Here, the Pacific Tectonic Plate is subducted beneath the Ohotsk Plate, just a few kilometers off the coast. And so, the area is geologically extremely active. In fact, two of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded shook Kamchatka in 1737 and 1952 at magnitudes of over 9 degrees. The 1952 quake even caused a tsunami that ravaged Hawaii and even reached as far as New Zealand and Chile. And these are not odd and rare occurrences. Powerful earthquakes happen periodically here. Luckily, because the peninsula is sparsely populated, the number of casualties is usually quite low. That said, this is certainly not a place for the faint-hearted. So this place is active. Maybe a bit too active. But it isn't just earthquakes that shake the ground. Kamchatka also has volcanoes. From the capital city, you can get a nice, albeit frightening, view of no less than three volcanoes. Koryakski, Avachinsky and Kozelski. Yes, that beautiful mountain from this picture is actually an active volcano. Kronotsky is a special volcano due to its perfect shape. It's considered to be the most beautiful volcano in the world. But the real highlight is Klyuchevskaya Sopka. This beast of a volcano is the biggest in all of Eurasia. Yes, from London to Kamchatka and from the North Pole all the way to Indonesia, you won't find a bigger active volcano. 
It's 4,750 meters tall, and since its discovery, it's been continuously active. So even if you're the best, most experienced climber in the world, don't climb this one, would you? Earthquakes and volcanoes Can this place get any more dangerous? Yes, yes it can. This place is bear country. No one knows exactly how many brown bears roam Kamchatka's countryside, but it's estimated that you'll find around 3 to 4 bears for every 100 square kilometers. There could be as many as 30,000 brown bears living in this peninsula. That, my friends, is by far the highest concentration of bears anywhere in the world. And last but not least, we have to mention a place that looks otherworldly – the Kamchatka Valley of Geysers. This 6 km long basin has around 90 geysers and many, many hot springs and is the second largest concentration of geysers in the world. The valley is close to the Kikpinich volcano because, of course it is, so temperatures below the ground are spectacularly high – around 250 degrees Celsius. That, by the way, is enough to melt solder. While you are allowed to visit the place, it's not an option many of us have. The valley is practically inaccessible, so the only way you can get here is by helicopter. Unfortunately, in 2007, two-thirds of the valley were covered by an absolutely massive mudflow, so the place isn't what it used to be. But even so, it's still an exciting and dangerous place. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.